Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. It's a Wednesday and exactly seven days ago, last Wednesday, we had the governor of Lagos State as our esteemed guest. Um, I have actually been boasting around the house that uh, since the governor agreed to come on again today, I say we have given ourselves the distinction of having a state governor twice in as many weeks. Show me the program that has done that yet. Anyhow, on to serious matter, uh, His Excellency Mr. Babatunde Raji Fashola is our governor. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor, for coming on the program. Thank you for having me back. Indeed. Now, uh, let me just situate your coming back a bit because uh, it's partly due to, I would like to believe, our entreaties. But then I suspect that much more importantly, uh, somebody reached you or some guests reached you from home. And uh, I, have, I even want to clarify a rumor. Is it true that one of our viewers was actually able to call you uh, and that, uh, or, I mean, that you called one of our viewers? I just want to clarify that point. Yes, actually, I did. Um, I, I watched the program, I think, the day after I came in. That's right, on a Thursday. And uh, um, they were discussing something entirely different. That's and, right. Um, I, I think that they were going to have the head of the anchor for that day, <laughs> and you were, you were at a safe distance. I had taken cover. So, <laughs> and, um, and they felt that um, you didn't ask me any question about education. Of mm. course, he, it was his... Uh, responsibly, I think, to explain that the program for that day was to discuss the APC roadmap. That's right. And uh, not about LASU mm. and so And that, uh, well, somebody even called in and said, look, you could have kept him for two hours and maybe exactly education would have come up and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recall then that he responded that the program was one hour. And exactly. he said, so why not let the governor have two hours? And I said to myself, look, this is people's power. Um, I have to come back here. There you and, go. And uh, just around the same time as you were trying to reach me, I think I reached one of the guests who called in because I asked my media advisor to call in the studio if they could give me the number. Mm. Because uh, it was a very, very emotional issue it was. about ed education. And I felt the need to share um, the, the facts only. People can then... Um, mm -hmm draw their own inferences. The yes. facts on which we acted okay. are the most important thing, and that's why I am here. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. The facts, I don't know that the facts are exactly not well known, but whether people are ready to accept the facts, again, we'll go from it. Even as recently as yesterday, uh, perhaps it's slightly different. Maybe it's the same. Somebody, and again, it was a lady. It's the ladies. It is it's the ladies who are the radicals. A lady called in and said, eh, we know as for Governor Fashola, he doesn't give a damn about education. So, but this is, that's the reason why I called in. I said, aha, aha, here we go. Well, so, I won't I would quite call them radicals. I will call them nation builders. They, fe they feel the brunt of the nation's, uh, nation's uh, underperformance. And uh, they, as mothers, they should be concerned. Uh, they, they are also amongst our most passionate supporters. So when, when they raise their voices, we must listen and we must explain. As I've said before uh, on this program and at other events, uh, when government takes policy decisions, we expect that it will affect people, but we do so in the larger, uh, larger interest. We do so uh, because we think that it is right. Mm -hmm. Um, we expect also that um, our decisions will be subject to social and political debate, but we, we feel that it is important to circumscribe the facts so that when the debate starts, um, they are debated on the real facts, not facts From a position that, of that people imagine, mm -hmm. not facts that people create on our mm -hmm. behalf. And, and that's why uh, you will see, for example, some of the facts going out about LASU is that the infrastructure is run down, government is not doing anything. So we sent out the Commissioner for Information with uh, journalists. Go to the school, go and see for yourself. And some of the people that I've had discussions with about LASU, I've asked them, have you been to the school? They said, no. And I said, why don't you go there and then let's, let's have a discussion. Mm. A school where six major uh, facility projects are being constructed simultaneously and uh, so why don't you go and see for yourself speak to the students too because some people hide behind the social media and tweet now go and get a pulse of the students who are in the school 
but but uh, behind all of this is uh, a, a nagging, uh, sh shall I say, uh, emotion. Uh, it's a certain perception. Uh, those that can afford the high fees, uh, because when you come to the relatives of what it was before, uh, now Lasso uh, for new intakes uh, will be at par, just about at par with private universities. And no, I disagree, sir. I disagree, and perhaps that's why I said we should we should deal with it. Two fifty to three thousand. Uh, Two fifty to around three hundred thousand. Twenty five thousand before. Twenty five thousand before, and that was around nineteen ninety nine. That's right. Now between nineteen ninety nine and now, we've gone fifteen years. What was at the price of nineteen ninety nine that has remained the same? Let's be factual and let's be honest. So. Uh, I, pay, I pay fees. I pay fees, first of all, for words, for guardians, for relations in private schools, and they range from around 600 to 700,000 naira. Yes. 800,000, I think, in Babcock or Leeds University to study law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so I also, I also approve scholarships, so I know what we're paying out. Yes. yes. Now, and first of all, let us be clear on the facts. I, I think it's important if, if we deal with the facts, then so that we can have a discussion. And people can follow us. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will not take the full value mm -hmm. of my presence here. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't go into the school simply to go and raise fees. That was not why. Indeed, it was the students who came to the House of Assembly. The students came to the House of Assembly. Saying, and I remember their words then, that their school had become like a glorified secondary school. The infrastructure was old. It was the infrastructure with which the school started in 83 that was largely there bungalows and stuff and that you know they wanted me to intervene as visitor the house of assembly passed a resolution urging me to exercise my powers as visitor of the school set up a visitation panel which we did the visitation panel i recall was chaired by uh, justice olade olashene silva and there were people professor sage and, and a, a couple of educationists because I'm not an educationist. Go in there and go and have a look. They came up with many recommendations. One of the recommendations, and, and the topical ones are the ones I will deal with. And perhaps it's important to, to put light to the fact that at that time, the school had lost accreditation in about 30 courses. Also, fact, four-year courses were taking like seven, eight years. Why? Because the students were not passing or what? One breakdown after oh, okay. the other. Okay, okay. The school was always being shut down. Okay. There were so many things wrong. Recommendations came so many. We accepted some. We modified some and so on and so forth. Now, one of the, 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 the difficult recommendations to deal with was that the vice chancellor should leave midterm. It was a difficult one. Um, the one to raise school fees was also a difficult one. Um, then we, also, of course, had the one to invest in the school. Now, we, we, we had a meeting with the Vice Chancellor, and to his credit today, um, when we presented this report to him, and he said to me, he said, look, Governor, I came here to build, not to destroy. If my presence here will set back the school, I will hand him my resignation. And so graciously, he did, midterm. And, and, and that's a mark of greatness for me. And I, I continue to commend Professor Hussein for, for sacrificing himself so that Lasso can develop. Now, um, about the school fees, I mean, that we had to adjourn. We held Exco for four consecutive days from 9 in the morning till 10 p.m. We constituted a subcommittee of Exco to go and do a comparison of what all the school fees across universities in Nigeria were. The privately owned ones, the state owned ones, the federal. And we tried to sit in the middle because part of the report was that we were losing our best teachers because they didn't think that the school was aspirational mm -hmm. if it continued to charge 25,000 naira. So we were losing our best teachers to private schools and people were going there to go and pay 700, 800,000 naira. Now, did we want a university that was producing students with quality, or did we just want to continue? So it was a hard decision to make. So one of the decisions we made was that we, the cost, the, the cost
changes ranged from I think 190,000 to about 250,000. So once they flat out, okay. it differed from subject to subject. But we went from 25,000 to, to about 200, 190 to 2, it was that band. But what did we do thereafter? The first thing we did was that these new fees were not going to apply to any child that was already in the school who had come in at the old rate. So it doesn't apply to them. The students came to meet me and said, well, that we understand that, but what about our brothers and sisters? And I said to them that, look, your brothers and sisters who are outside the school are still applicants. They are not yet my students. And therefore, they didn't have a case, really and truly. They were not students of last. It remained a discussion for the school whether to admit them or not to admit them, mm. subject to their complying with admission. But I knew that we were going to hit that problem down the curve. Okay. Council and I now decided that how do we ensure that a child from an indigent family who gets admission into that school does not lose that admission? Okay. And we did two things. We almost doubled our scholarship budget from 700 million naira per annum to 1.2 billion naira. That was the first thing we did. Mm -hmm. Then we made provision for scholarship only for Lasso students, another 200 million naira. For and just the Lasso students Lasso. and there are other pay, institutions, yes. but Lasso alone, 200 the, million. You see, the global scholarship for the state covers students of Lasso, Lagos indigenous who are in other universities, and students from across board who are residents, not indigenous now, who are residents in Lagos, who pay taxes, who want to go for university studies overseas. Mm -hmm. Now we doubled that from, almost doubled it as I said, from about 700 million to 1.2 billion naira. Then we now provided another 200 million naira dedicated to Lasso. That if there was any child who got admission and could not enter the school only on account of fees. We won't leave that child behind. These are the facts. Then, immediately after we started implementing that policy, now this policy has been implemented for two consecutive academic sessions. So this is the third session. And it's come back only for a reason that I will allude to shortly. Mm -hmm. So, the students, some of the students came and honestly said, look, we can pay, but we can't pay at once. Those were students who wanted to pay, whose parents could afford to pay. And can we pay instrument? And we said, oh, why not? Approved. And these are in the public domain. That is for fresh students coming yes. in that now, will be subject to the new fees yes. that said we can't pay at once. You say, okay, go ahead and pay instrument. Oh, yes, we did that. Then we now also provided scholarship for those who were unable to pay at all. Now, the truth is that in other jurisdictions, what you will get, and, and this we must contest, because when I hear these debates, I don't understand mm -hmm. whether people reason through it. Mm. In other jurisdictions, what you will get is a student's loan. Yeah, okay. We are giving you a scholarship, which is not repayable. The only thing you are bound to do is a bond. And we bond you on the condition that if we don't find a job for you six months after you leave, you are free to go. Now, in other jurisdictions, you get a loan. So you leave school, you are unemployed, you get a student's loan, so you are a debtor and an unemployed debtor. So this is the best deal that you can have, really. Now, but back to the point, the real debate and the emotion about last week. Uh, uh, sorry, sir, before you get to that, yes. I wanted to understand better the no child left behind policy yes. like you spoke about earlier. Uh, yes, I'm going to it. Uh -huh. that's, that's what I'm going uh -huh. to You see, the real debate about, about last week and the emotion is the impression being created that children of the poor will not be able to go to school. It's, it's totally an unfounded fear, given the facts that I have put before you. Now, in three years that we have implemented this policy, nobody has pointed out to me one child, one child, who had admission into Lasso, mm -hmm. who was denied admission only because he could not pay. Because no such child exists? No. Given what we have put forward, no short child should exist. We have increased scholarship. We have a dedicated scholarship for Lasso. And please, excuse me, I think in 2014, uh, let us begin to stand back and ask ourselves, 
this idea of a university for the poor what is it going to give to the poor let's be honest with ourselves it's not going to help the poor well we say education people are poor. is going to lift people no, no, listen, sir, listen sir listen sir if you may if we say people are poor the two that makes me sit down here is education nothing more and the fortitude and luck of life now but i paid fees and it wasn't easy for my nursing my, my mother who was a nurse or my father who was a journalist i went through school sometimes a month without my allowance coming because my parents couldn't afford it mm -hmm. classmates who supported me through school are alive to give testimony so it's never been easy and nobody presupposes that but what we must give to people who are from uh, 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 underprivileged families is the highest level of qualitative education not cheap education because look let's do the math and the, and the reasoning if you had to employ two journalists today one trained in 25,000 naira school and the other one trained abroad because the people who are the champions of the poor don't put their children there their children are abroad so when their children come the first thing when they come to you to seek job who are you likely to employ the one that trained abroad with six thousand pounds per annum or the one that was trained with twenty five thousand naira now part of the problem that i think the visitation panel saw was that it appeared that even students didn't take their education seriously they were always at the forefront of breaking up the school mm. because of the amount that they were paying so really and truly let's face it a four-year course becomes a seven-year course and since then since 2009 this is the first break the last break that we had was the first disruption we've had and some of the things we have seen is that some of these students were incited to disrupt the school now we are hearing from some sections of the school who are employees of the school saying well you know what pay us more money mm. but to reduce school fees so it's like you sitting down here <laughs> and telling your management say you know what reduce your advert rate but i want more money but back to the point the school fees don't fund lasso and all of that the ministry of information has put out in the public domain on the best what we get is about 700 million naira a year so far from from those school fees pound for pound now uh, this year's budget for lasso alone is about 9 billion naira about three billion naira is going to continuous infrastructure improvement we are building a new senate block a new a new uh library uh new building for their faculty of management sciences new students arcade i went into their students arcade and i said is this where you hold students in your meeting and i said i'm going to pull this down and bring it, build you a new one is roofed now they are in the last stages of fitting new lecture theaters for law school students a new school of transportation a new uh, uh, staff school for the school now all of this didn't happen because anybody went on demonstration but it happened because there was a plan to upgrade the infrastructure of the school in any event you know, so i, I think with this with this set of we, facts we have some visuals of uh, ongoing uh, projects at uh oh it's not here uh, i thought it would yeah. be here so with this set of facts people can now form their opinion but not everybody will agree with us okay but those are the facts we have made provision that no child should be left behind now nobody has told us i haven't seen just last week i approved scholarships for about 370 students the scholarship even applies we have scholarship applications from secondary school there was a young lady whose whose case i remember very pathetic ex exceptionally brilliant child but she's physically challenged so we had to provide for special needs and all of that for her mm -hmm. i was too glad to approve those things mm. so all of the conceptions and the and the and the, okay, these are some of the new buildings yes, in uh, all of the perceptions and all of those going on out there are not based on the real facts now today Today, what we hear from the employers, from NECA and the organized private sector is that there is, a, there is an issue about quality of education. Okay? And I think there is no dispute about that. 
Now, how does the reduction of the fees improve the quality of the education? Somebody should tell me that. So let's just get logical instead of emotional. First of all, we have provided the cushion. We raise the fees. We have provided the cushion. And we can't have a university where only children of the poor go. Mm -mm. It's no longer Nobody a university. Asking for that. In fact, people, the, the poor are hoping that the university system, education, will become the leveler. So that, you know, generally speaking... It is already the leveler. Because even parents, even parents who are struggling, are not struggling and compromising about the quality of education that their children get. Now, Lagos State needs more than one university. We've, we've come to a clear conclusion about that. But we told ourselves, can we leave Lasso and go and start a brand new university? No. We are not made like that. We have to solve the problem in that school before we start another one. Now, given the policies that we have put in place, nobody is going to come out to tell you that we have restored accreditation back to all, this, all the courses that were withdrawn, except probably one. Part of the reason why accreditation was withdrawn was lack of facilities, was overcrowding, was the quality of teachers that the school was attracting. And teachers were telling us, we can't come and teach in a 25,000 hour school. That's the feedback we were getting. So, some of our best teachers have been lost to local private universities. Some have been lost to universities abroad. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you said, Mr. <coughs> Governor, you, you, you said, Mr. Governor, that uh, all, all, all of this development that we see going on in Lasso, it's not coming from the fees. No, it, no, no. It's not coming from the school fees. No, it's not. Uh, and, and it is that understanding, perhaps, and um, you are left to make a judgment on that, that, look, it's not, the Governor himself has said it's not coming from there. Uh, therefore, this additional burden, I, I want to try and understand that bit. When lecturers say that, uh, for example, I'm not going to come to a 25,000 Naira university, what, what's their beef? Is, is it that the, it's, it's too small a fee? It doesn't affect them since first of all, we just learned that none of the developments come from First fees. of all, I think that the point also to make that some of the commentators don't appreciate is that every school in Nigeria that is a university, is subject to a regulator. That regulator is the National Universities Commission. And one of the things that the National Universities Commission does is first to ascribe an admission number to each university. You cannot admit more than this number of people. Now, for some time, I think we breach that rule because of our pricing. Okay. Okay. And therefore, you had overcrowded classrooms, and continuously what we got was withdraw the accreditation. They mm. haven't complied. Mm -hmm. So that was the error. So we were actually feeding people very uh, uh, undeserving quality of education, if you ask yeah, me. Yeah. So, and so we leave them 25,000, so let's go. Everybody come inside, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Four years become six years, six years become seven years, and then that was the net effect of we haven't received our certificates three years after we left, and so on and so forth. Now, Mr. Governor, now I have, uh, thank you very much for giving us this background and this. Now, so if we have repriced, yes, and then we have put funding mm -hmm. to get you into the school, I don't think we have hurt anybody. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know. That's, that's the net effect. We have replies. Fine. If you get admission into our school and bring an admission letter and you apply for scholarship, you will get it. Okay, because that was where I was. You going. will get it. That's where I was going. Because you, you, uh, as it's clear, that uh, since there are Nigerians who are putting their kids in some private universities, and as you yourself have, te have testified, sometimes the fees go up to seven, eight hundred thousand naira. Uh, now, there will be parents who do, do not have a problem with 250 or maybe 3,000. But then there are many other parents that cannot afford it and you've just been speaking to that particular issue. Now, what many people don't really know about, certainly let me speak for myself, yes, sir. is the no child left behind policy of the Lagos State government. That, that is it. That's no, no, not many people know, know that. No, it's out that, there. Well, if you pass, if you, we are you guilty have an of anything, if we are guilty of anything mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it is under communication. Okay. We are not guilty of leaving any child behind. Okay. Now, uh, how, how will this be determined? The rich can pay. 
the ones that are not so rich, I want to, to be, show us. Uh -huh. You have to show us that you are indigent. Okay. You have okay. to show us that you are indigent. Okay. So once and you, you have, have to apply. You have to apply yes. for that. This, the scholarship board under the office of the special advisor on education will make his assessment, mm -hmm. and there's a process for appeal. Mm -hmm. And the scholarships are not always open-ended scholarships all over the world. Sometimes you get full scholarships, yeah. sometimes you get partial scholarships. Right. So depending on the level of indigency that you show, mm -hmm. uh, I see. I see. this is what you get. But my word has value, and I say it on my word of honor. If you have admission into that school, mm -hmm. and you show indigency and you apply, you will get support from us. What percentage of the annual intake uh, has been reserved for such cases that if good oh, no, cases no 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 there is no percentage reserve you see what we are trying to achieve if yori's son or daughter gets admission and yori can pay yori should pay so that his children go to school mm -hmm. closer to home if first of all children get admission and they can't pay because first of all can't afford it on the basis of his income, they should apply for scholarship. If Fashola can pay 25,000 Naira, for example, mm -hmm. government should not be able to give a scholarship beyond 25,000 Naira to cover what is left or give a full scholarship and say, look, listen, on this basis and on that basis, we give a school full scholarship to these children. So, but what that also brings that people don't know and people have not sat down to examine that. When you are student on scholarship you get bonded to serve the state yeah. so it's almost like reserved employment yes when yes. you graduate and you said for six months after which if you're free we to go give if you employment within six months after you graduate then your bond is discharged those are the rules we've set well um, I now people may disagree with us mm -hmm. but those are the facts we don't expect everybody to agree we don't even claim that we are perfect some people may have better ways to do the same thing but the perception out there that we are disempowering the poor is an unfounded perception. And uh, the perception, as, uh, uh, as a guest, one of our viewers shared with us yesterday, which is, Fashola doesn't care about education in Lagos. Oh, I care about yes. education because I understand every day why I exercise this momentous privilege to be governor of Lagos. It is because I was given a very good education. And all of that education came from this country. I was trained in this country, it totally made in Nigeria product, so I understand it. That is why I am battling to resuscitate education, even in public schools, in secondary and primary levels. Today, the, the, the uh, enrollment in our public schools is increasing. And when you ask people from the household survey that we conduct every year, uh, last year's survey showed us that people were satisfied with the level of teaching and mm -hmm. with the level of infrastructure mm -hmm. in the school. Mm -hmm. When I leave this program now, I'm going to a teacher's event. Okay. That is how important education is for me. Okay. I hold an annual town halls meeting, adopt a school, a policy that we created six years ago. I have not missed one meeting. It is never, nothing is more important than that program. If anything conflicts with it, I cancel okay. that other thing. Okay. So I understand too clearly. That is why we have been able to move WAEC pass rate from 7% when I was elected governor in 2007 to 41% last year. And we have set a target now of 60% before I leave office. So incrementally, we have added value. Education is a long distance race. Okay. Those who expect that its fruits will yield, pro, uh, the fruits will mature in a few years don't understand it. Mm, mm. I do. Okay. Uh, well, Yami is calling in and wants to join this conversation with the governor. Good morning, Yami. Hello, hello, Mr. Yari. Good morning. Uh, hello, Mr. Yari. Please, I would like to contribute. Yeah. Uh, Respect to what the governor just said. Uh, is that we are determining uh, on, uh, on jam reserve again? Is it on the school fees? And moreover, when uh, Mr. So the governor was in Union Bay, the steam price they pay was not dependent on inflation. How can you expect a poor man that will afford 25,000 and now speed up to 230,000? They now expect them that to get scholarship. Is it as easy as that? That's number one. Then number two, Mr. Governor, when you started your program in the first time, you did a lot of job in Lagos, which we all recommend. And now, this time around, it seems some godfather or godfatherism have tried to stop your development, in which you don't see the rate at which you started the work in the first time compared to what you are doing now. 
Okay, yeah, well, thank you very much for calling in. Appreciate your call. Well, um, uh, you asked quite a number of questions, Yomi, and uh, thank you for joining in the program. But uh, I'll try and recall and trace my way back. I think mm. the first question was whether admission was based on, on JAM. Admission is based on, on JAM and the, uh, the U... Um, uh, UME. The, 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 uh, UTME. There's another exam that the school sets mm -hmm. after JAM, post-JAM. Yes. The post-JAM. The post-JAM. Mm -hmm. and, and it is from there that you get an admission letter so uh it, now the as i said earlier the question whether of twenty five thousand or hundred thousand has become a, a a moot point if you like because we're saying whatever it is right this is the pricing of the school we will pay so i have no fear if you can't afford it show us that you can't afford it we will pay mm -hmm. so it's become a moot point so unless we are still emotional and you are saying, oh, just give me 25,000 and that's what I want. And then I've asked the question, if it's 25,000 or nothing, does it solve the problem of the lack of quality? How does reducing it to 25,000 improve the quality mm -hmm. of education? Mm -hmm. and, and so perhaps whilst we are all commenting, if we get less emotional and more rational and logical, you will see the point I'm making here, that nobody is in, has been disentitled by our policy. On the contrary, we are able to attract better teachers. On the contrary, we are able to attract parents to recommit back to Lasso and put their children there because they can afford it. We are also ensuring that children who get admission into the school are not left behind. Okay. Uh, this is an aspirational policy. Mm. Uh, we understand that not everybody will agree with it. But the results will become manifest down the line. Okay, Mr. Governor, precious from Maryland. And, and there was a okay. What, what, no, uh, he, he can't have all those questions answered, Mr. Governor. Okay. Otherwise, they'll be uh, precious from Maryland. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, I want to. I would like to speak to Bolivia for sure. Well, maybe you're a bit too casual there, but please try again. And uh, when you do get through, maybe just go straight to the point. Uh, thank you very much. So there it is. Maybe there will be those who will be hearing it for the first time this morning that uh, uh, the lasso issue, uh, it is very much uh, being handled. But then there's a policy that we don't get to hear very much about, the government's no child left behind policy. Should you not be able to pay, if you have admission, the government will check you out. And if it is a deserving case, no deserving student will be left behind in Lagos State. That part of it somehow has never entered into... No, the I mean, we're guilty of lack of communication. That's, that's <laughs> all we're guilty of. Because, look, listen, for example, implicit in that were children who said, we want to pay instrument, and then we said, go ahead. Yeah. 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 So, the no child left behind policy was already embedded into the policy. Mm -hmm. But it manifested itself in so many ways. And of course, at this level, when you are making policy decisions, I always say, it's like a laboratory environment. It's controlled. It's when the policy is released and people begin to engage with the policy that you will see the different ways that it affects them. And you must continuously remain flexible and adaptable mm -hmm. to respond to the, to the way that people say, look, this thing now pinches me here. So you must go back there and losing where it pinches. Okay. Uh, Paul from Ikeja, good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Paul. My name is Paul from Ikeja. Okay. Um, Your Excellency, I am um, particularly impressed by the fact that we have a governor who is on top of his game. That's my candid uh, opinion. Um, and the last time a commissioner was on this uh, program, and um, like you looked at him and said, look, let me go there myself. And uh, the depth of your you know, explanation of how these things work is fast, I am particularly impressed. Um, my question, which uh, bothers me so far, is the issue of um, the administration of this scholarship program. How, uh, I, I, I do, my candid opinion is, is that this is a difficult thing for any uh, chief executive 
given the way we do things here. Now, somebody will say, I know somebody. Somebody will say, I don't know somebody. Somebody should help somebody. Now, I know it is the report that comes to your table that you look at. It is not possible for you, you know, to know uh, the details of what happened with each individual. Um, uh, really, I, I don't have a solution to this, but I think, uh, Your Excellency, sir, please look into it. Okay, that thank you very the, much, Paul. The beneficiaries Paul, of this thank project. you very much for calling in. You, we got the gist. Well, you know why I'm chuckling, Paul? Uh, the reason, you're right, I can't see everything, and, and you're right. But uh, this is my job. I take it very seriously. And I, I was saying before you called in that just last week we approved scholarships for 370 students. I keep a tab on what goes on. You see, um, the Ministry of Education has two special advisors, one commissioner, six permanent secretaries, seven permanent secretaries actually. That's how big and important it is. And each with their specialized roles. And I read a substantial part. I can't say I read everything. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. it, it's a big undertaking. Now, the, the heart of your concern is the management and the efficacy of the scholarship scheme. I agree with you entirely. And um, I, as, as I said, it, it's, it's, it's a place where myself, members of the Executive Council, have been very busy. Mm -hmm. In the next few weeks, you will hear the announcement of a few uh, policies that redefine the width and the breadth of the local and foreign scholarships. Because part of what we are also doing is that we just see that we are giving out our money overseas. So when the children go abroad, where do they go? They go to schools that are not owned by Nigerians. Schools that are not owned by Nigerians collect their tuition. Um, the transport system taxes that pick them from airports are not owned by Nigerians. So we're just shipping money and jobs abroad. Airlines that are not owned by Nigerians take them abroad. We pay all of these fees. They now get hostels in accommodation that is not owned by Nigerians. So the landlords there are not. And so we, we had to kind of streamline and say, look, what are the courses that Nigerian universities can, can train? We will raise the quality mm -hmm. of teaching in those courses and reduce or eliminate scholarships to those courses. Sciences, science-based courses, where we agree that there's still a deficit in capacity, are the areas where we will fund overseas scholarships. So if you want to study law, we won't give you a, a scholarship to go and study law abroad. We will not anymore. Mm. Okay. Uh, if you want to study medicine, last week is good enough. It's one of the best in the country. We won't give you a, a, a scholarship to I go and study medicine I abroad. Hear. Okay, let's hear it from uh, Blessing calling in from Okwebi. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning, Blessing. I'm very happy this morning because the governor has just said what is in my mind concerning last week. The other time he came in, I didn't have chance talk to him. But one particular thing that he said this morning that I want him to <laughs> declare, me and Blessing Clifford from Delta State, from Mr. Nobody family. So he'll be telling me now that if I should have admission in Latsu since I'm not indigenous, so I'm still going to pay that three fifty thousand. That is one. Two, please I want to ask Mr Governor, I live at Okera. Some people just came in and they now said we should start paying for television, radio, all sorts of things. I now asked. I went to market, suffer, buy my radio, and this time still paying for NEPA. Using generation, they still, generator, they still ask me to pay for television. So I don't know that explanation. I'm not talking again, sir. Bl blessing. Do, uh, what? Television license or what, what do you Yes, want? I should pay. Yes, okay, right. Yes. Television license. Radio yes, television yes. license. Okay. Yes. Some people so came to you. One, sir, please, Mr. Governor, I appreciate what you do. Time, please, I want to beg you. I have fast food at Hagege Market. But if you see what those guys are doing, I know you can never send them that kind of message. They will pick people, treat them naked, <laughs> naked, beat them. It's not good. All this thing is poor people. Some people you build shops, the common people. When you now start locating it now, they will say it's five million. 
oh. 20 million. Okay. How do you expect Bl poor people blessing, to take bl that Blessing, shot? I've got to interrupt you. Forgive me, but I've got to interrupt you. So thank you very, very much for calling. The governor has heard. You touched on a number of issues. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Governor, she started for, with education. Yeah, I think, I think yes. that... Uh, start with education. Well, blessing starts by saying that she's Mrs. Nobody. Yes. But she concludes by saying that she now owns a fast food joint. So, and clearly, she's self-employed and probably employing people. And um, so, I, I don't know which part of that is to believe. But the, the, from the last part, no, she let me she's say... A struggling business let, let, let she she's, she's, she's a struggling businessman, what you say. She's a struggling businessman. She runs a fast food joint. And, and that, that's the point I simply want to make. And uh, people can draw their own inference. But the first point to make to, to Blessing is that as a resident of this state... No officer of our government has a right to molest you, to harass you, or to assault you. If they do, my telephone number is still 0803-430-1122, and my email is published out there, brfgov at gmail.com. Please escalate that complaint to me, and we will bring such people to justice. We fund them with your taxes to serve you, not to harass you. Uh, so that said, but back to the first uh, question yeah. about your entitlement to go to Lasso or not to go to Lasso. Uh, as I, maybe you didn't understand or listen well, and I, um, or maybe I didn't communicate well, and, and for that I apologize. But the point I sought to make was that it was not limited to indigents alone who benefit from the scholarship. Once you show that you live in Lagos, hmm. you are a resident you are entitled to a scholarship. What you are not entitled to as a resident is bursary. Mm -hmm. We've drawn that distinction. Indigents will get bursaries, just like other states pay bursaries to their indigents. But we will give to residents of this state uh, scholarship. scholarship. And that's why I continue to appeal to you, go and register under the Lagos State Residence Registration Scheme. Because, it's because of the migratory challenge that we face, People migrate into this state every day. We need to be sure that the taxes that we collect from residents are being applied for the benefit of the people who live here, not from people who come to benefit here and pay nothing. So if you're a resident of Lagos, you are covered by the entitlement to scholarship and the no child left behind policy. But if you are not, I'm sorry, I cannot use taxes collected from Lagos residents and indigents to service indigents of other states who do not reside here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that, okay. that distinction uh, yes. was... Uh, uh, she, she also mentioned or complained about the uh, uh, alleged high-handedness of uh, the kick against indigenous I, I, I think I've dealt with oh, that. Okay. Uh, Nobody is allowed. Nobody. No, no, no. There, there is no justification for it. Whatever enforcement they have to do, they must do so in a most civilized manner. That, that, okay. that, that, that is the standard that is acceptable mm -hmm. uh, if we must remain true to our sobriquet mm -hmm. as a center of excellence. And uh, I think that the problem really is that many of us have still not demil demilitarized ourselves. Many members of my generation lived in the, in the military era. So, and, and so on both sides, the, uh, the people who, who violate uh, regulations uh, and, and those who seek to enforce them and I've asked my yeah. policemen, for example, I've asked traffic wardens, why are you carrying a stick? Are you directing cattle or vehicles? And do vehicles respond? But it's something that is almost second mm, nature to them. Mm, so mm. if you post them out to any road traffic, they must hold something. And I don't know where that mentality came from. And it's something that we must, over time, take away from them. And the big man syndrome, too, doesn't help. Okay. So... And when they stop you and you have violated and you start threatening them, don't you know who I am? You are only aggravating the situation. Mm -hmm. So we must all just subject ourselves to law. It's a two-way traffic. Okay. How about the, the little matter, perhaps it's not such little matter, about the radio TV licenses that you also brought up? Yes. What, what, what can you tell us about that? Unfortunately, I am not in a position, and, and this my memory just fails mm -hmm. me, I'll be honest. Because it has gone into abeyance. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say clearly that we have um, uh, published a list of rates and levies collectible by local governments into a law 
published by the State House of Assembly. What I cannot say categorically mm. here, sitting mm. here mm. now, mm -hmm. because I don't want to mislead the public, mm. is I, I don't remember off the top of my head whether radio license was part of that approved list or not. Okay. okay. But I can send the information back to you mm -hmm. to the studio mm -hmm. when I go okay. to check. Okay. Uh, Yomi, who has gone now, let me apologize to you. I didn't want to interrupt the governor while he was explaining, and so we've lost Yomi, but Ade has called him from Igondo. Good morning, Ade. Hello, Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. My governor, excellency, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, so, I've never gone against any one of your policy before. But issue of Flasu, <laughs> let me tell you the detriment. They are using it against APC right now. Issue of Flasu. The poor man, like what you said about the bond or whatever, they will not be able to have access to this. And Lassu is now becoming a graveyard. We don't have students anymore because of this school fees. <laughs> So, sir, I want you people to do something about it and reveal this issue of school fees is too much. We have to think of the, 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 the poor masses in this country. Even most of the students that came out from school, no job for them. So everybody just wants to get educated. When you are educated, you get informed. Okay. You have to carry along the poor people. It is very important because Baba Wola gave us free education. Not a kind of exorbitant money that everybody is paying now. Where there is no light that can provide, give us a job in this country. No light. All right then. Ade, well, thank you very much for calling in. Uh, quite frankly, there's nothing more to add because you've explained... No, I think the there's, something, there's something there. Uh, okay, and, and okay. Well, yeah, he said he wants you to reduce it. I, I think that uh, we, we, it's important to, to create understanding. Yes, Chief Obafemi Aolo, great philosopher, great leader, visionary thinker, free education. But free education was a primary education level. Let us remember that. Let us also remember what the problem of the time was. It was mass illiteracy. The problems of that time are different from the problems of today. And therefore, you cannot use the drugs and the diagnosis of yesterday to solve today's problems. The problems of today is a poor quality education. The literacy level in Lagos today is 89%. The national literacy level is about 55% on the average because some states are still behind. Now, so it was free education at primary level. Many of the products of Chibolafemi Aulawa's free education went abroad to obtain a university degree and either on scholarship or paid and came back to come and dominate and teach in the University of Ibadan and University of Ife. Those are the facts. So let us understand that. Then the, the point that you make, sir, that last week is a graveyard, uh, well, it's not supported by the facts that I have. And as the visitor of that school, I, 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 should, be, I, I should think that I have more currency of the facts than, than you do. Um, Lasu is not a graveyard. There are students in Lasu. The reality is that Lasu is now complying with his prescribed admission quota as indicated by his regulator, the Nigerian National Universities Commission. There are, I think last year, 2012, we have admitted 3,900 and something, 3,600 and something students into the school. Uh, in, the, in the last academic year, it was 2,600 and something. So, and those are our, mm. our, 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 uh, 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 admission uh, caps, really, that we are now complying with. Okay. I, I do even recall that uh, in the discretionary list that we have, where we sent, say, students didn't even qualify because they didn't make the cutoff point, which was even reduced for them to come in. So what we are doing is just ensuring now that standards are met in the school okay so uh, it's not that you now admit people who didn't qualify to be in university and then at the end of the day when they leave they don't get a job because they were not supposed to be there in the first place they probably should have gone to a technical college okay i hear you uh dr oj thank you very much for holding on go ahead hello Yuri, good morning good morning doctor Yuri, can you hear me yes i can hello Yuri. yes i can hear you all right, um, I want to make my point very straight so that I don't you know, tie up the lines. I want to commend the governor. I, I, I am in PDP, not in ACN, 
But you know, I think governor has done so much well in this state. Um, education is quite um, um, critical in uh, nation building and development. And um, last two is a little state owned university that must not be let you know, to rough. And I think the government's intervention and um, policy is quite welcomed. But I think sentimental and biased, most electricians will not be happy that there's a hike in school fees. But I think it's for, it's for the better, you know, better lot in the near future so that our kids can actually, you know, 10, 15 years' time understand what he has done so far. Um, the intervention and policy is good. I would ask the governor if he can also create a special endowment fund where we see negotiations can contribute. It's been done in um, the U.S. and in Canada where the negotiations can contribute to um, such endowment funds so that, you know, there's a pool of resources for the state to use so that the state is not financially, you know, burdened, mm -hmm. okay? Then I want to go to another issue quickly. Um, His Excellency, um, I'm most impressed with the rate at which you are working on roads. I stay in the Keja um, on that area, and um, my roads are completely being tired. I, I appreciate it. It's just, it's just, my mom asked me to ask you a special question. If you're going towards Penn City, there's a place called Oba Akram. That is where um, Loma is currently building um, a loading station. Yeah. And my mom personally has a four plot of land in that place, which was acquired by Loma. And your excellency to date, nothing has been done about compensation. Nothing whatsoever. All right, Dr. J, thank you very much. Good. Appreciate your call. Well, uh, two, two main questions there. Yeah. Well, interesting. He started off by saying, look, I'm a PDP man, by the way. But In fact, the point I was going to first make was that uh, those who think that a policy in education aimed at ultimately improving it will be detrimental to the interests of APC do not speak the minds of the ordinary people out there. Indeed, if you go back in history, those who praised Chief Obafemi Awolowo's free education policy today perhaps do not know that when that policy was first initiated, it was met with resistance by the farmers. They protested. They revolted against it. Yeah, After yeah. the first revolt was killed and overcome, then he now said to them that they were going to pay taxes because that was where he was going to fund the education in order to make it free. Women came out again and protested. Forty years down the line, it is the best thing that ever happened to Nigeria. So, and a party, a political party that has articulated an education policy must be courageous enough to stand up and defend his policy, not to flip-flop and change his mind. And education is not something to play politics with. It's about people's lives. If you talk about human developmental index, you're talking about education and healthcare. It is not something that I will play politics with. Now, uh, the, the point that Jay was making, I think that there's some back and forth, uh, understandably, about the, the transfer loading station and the land that was taken there. Um, I think that uh, we will pay compensation, uh, undoubtedly, but the right to compensation must be established, mm -hmm. and we want to establish that those who own the land are the people who are actually making a claim to compensation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't want to be okay. subject to lawsuits that ultimately suggest that we have paid the wrong person and then we are chasing somebody who may have collected our money and not be the rightful owner. And I'm not suggesting that you are not the rightful owner, but those are the things that, mm. that are, we are just taking them mm. through process mm. and, and I appeal that you, okay. you bear with us. Uh, okay. Uh, our last caller today, because time does fly. I don't know. It happened the last time as well. Before we knew where we were, all the one hour had gone. Um, uh, good morning, uh, Kairat. Kairat from Festa. Good morning. Kairat? Oh dear. Kairat? Um, Good morning. Ah, morning, Kairat. I we, we can hear you. I use this opportunity to appreciate the governor. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we can. Me. Yes. Oh. Kairat, can you okay, hear me? Okay, I had the opportunity for him to personally sponsor me when I went to the US. Okay. okay. Kairat? I also am an alumna of Lagos State University. As the South Female Secretary General of the Student Union, I want to say that many of us were not happy about the hike in fees. But because of what we have heard, what I have heard him say today, there is need for communication. We need to let our people know exactly what the government policies are. And there's also the need for us to understand the process of getting scholarship. The 
before somebody gets a scholarship, what are what are the what what are the requirements within which the person gains admission and within which the person gets approved to receive the scholarship? Okay, Kyra, uh, thank you very much. Um, clearly, there's a, but at least we got what you said. Now, I, I, I don't know, Mr. Governor, if the answer to Kyra's uh, question is not existing on a government website somewhere. Uh, it probably will, but uh, what I can say is that if, if you are applying for a scholarship, you must have admission. Yes, okay. So we can't give a scholarship in vacuum. Mm -hmm. So if you have admission and you apply to us, that is one of the things we would like to see. Because when they apply to us for overseas scholarships, one of the first things they show us is a letter of admission from the school and a bill from the school saying, this we can't pay and we give those scholarships. So we don't expect that that process should be too different if you're applying for a scholarship to go to Lasso. It means that you already have an admission mm -hmm. into Lasso. So it, it therefore is unlikely that you, you, you get your admission and be able to get a scholarship for it in the same year. It, it, is, it is likely. It's simple. We're here. We're close to you. We're okay, in Lagos. It's, it's a very straightforward... It's a very uh, straightforward process. Okay. That's Ideally, the, the processes don't take more than two, three weeks before the file gets to me. And when I see scholarship files, except to check how many people are in it, mm -hmm. uh, how many... Uh, 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 how much is being... Uh, recommended for it and to ensure that there are uh, enough budget people. I, I approve them. I, I, I don't recall that I've turned down a scholarship application in seven years that I've been, been governor. Okay. I don't recall. Well, I, I think that's a fine place to leave it and I want to thank you very much, Mr. Governor, for this um, explanatory visit because all the confusion, you, you can even hear it from people calling from home that, you know, especially Kairat. Kairat said she's a beneficiary of the, yeah, she, of the scholarship I system, I, you I know, and uh, so. that she was among those who were a bit, you know, ups, or, you know uh, uptight about it. But now that she has the information that she has as a result of your coming on, uh, she can see that we... we I think, I think the think question to really ask is why would you take a scholarship to go abroad? and you are willing to take a scholarship to go to your own school. If it's good abroad, it should be good at home. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. So again, you know, the entire team and those of our viewers who took us up and uh, indeed reach you personally uh, well upon you've come we want to thank you on their behalf as well uh, thank you very much for coming i had had illu illusions that uh, uh, i'll be able to touch on quite a number of places but education you uh, you're laughing at me governor because I, I told you my plans that i have about six seven areas we're going to touch even this one if they give us another one uh, it looks like there's still more stuff to be said thank you very much governor Fashula, for coming on the program thank you for having me again indeed that's our program uh, today and um, you know as usual if you want to watch a repeat of this uh, re repeat broadcast of this program 12 30 midnight tonight uh you'll be able to do that join us tomorrow for a fresh edition of the program dapo arua joye will be in the chair bye bye now